Okay, let's talk about percent. And when it comes to practical math, everyday math, you definitely want to know as much as possible about percent. And this particular problem is kind of a different uh, type of percent problem. It's what we call a percent of increase problem. But uh, again, percent problems come in all sorts of varieties and flavors. Hopefully you can find, um, or you could do a basic percent problem like this. Let's say I asked you 6% of 70 okay so how do we find that and by the way if you have a calculator feel free to use your calculator but to answer this question just think about it for a second uh, what we need to do is we change that percent to a decimal so that's going to be 0.06 and then we multiply by this number so that would be 0 0.06 times 70 we put that into our, our calculator and we would get the answer so hopefully you have a pretty good sense of this if you're really struggling with percent uh, quick uh, recommendations before we go any further. I have a ton of percent videos on my YouTube channel. I cover basic percent, more interesting percent. I also have a math foundations course. I'll tell you more about that later. But if you already are struggling with a basic percent problem like this, then this particular video might just be a little bit too much for you. It's not like it's difficult, but um, you want to get that basic stuff down. What we're dealing with here is something called the percent of increase. So let's go ahead and take a look at our question. We want to... Uh, figure out well, 117, if 117 is increased by 28%, uh, what is that number? Okay, so 117 increased by 28% is what number? Well, if you know how to do this, go ahead and calculate that. Put your answer into the comment section. I'm actually gonna show you the answer here in just one second, but here's the deal. Even if you get the answer correct, all right, you wanna uh, make sure you're not guessing or you fully understand what you're doing, okay? Because a lot of people get math problems correct. They get the right answer, but they're not quite sure. And we don't want to be guessing when it comes to percent as percent is extremely important, especially in our everyday life. It has a lot to do with money. So if you like money in terms of saving money and being good with money, then you're going to want to understand percent really well. Okay, so I'm going to get to all this in just one second, but first let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades, and I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in math, and I'm especially speaking to those of you that have been struggling with, uh, with math, or maybe you think you're a bad math student. There really is no such thing. For those of you that uh, need help in math, what you really need is great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level, Check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. It will help you out big time, I promise. Also, if you're preparing for any sort of test with a math section, a ton of you, um, or actually um, many of you out there, are going to be taking a test like this. You may not even realize that any sort of entrance exam or placement exam, certification exam, things like the ASVAB, teacher certification, uh, ALEX, ACCUPLACE, or SAT, ACT, GED, etc. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. If you homeschool and have award-winning middle and high school math courses for homeschoolers, you can check that out. Hopefully, you have excellent math notes if you are a student. If you do not, you need to start immediately improving your notes. But in the meantime, you can use my math notes. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video as well. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer here. And again, don't feel shy about using a calculator to help you do these calculations, but here you go. All right, so 117 increased by 28% is 149.76. Okay, so if you got that answer right, I must go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A++. I'll give you 130% and a few stars to make you feel extra special. Nice job, very, very good. But uh, if you got the answer, you're like, well, I'm not quite sure. You know, I know I did something with these numbers and I got this answer. Um, well, you want to stick around and make sure you understand the process. If you didn't get this answer right, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you exactly what to do right now. Okay, so there's two ways we can think about the solution here. All right, so let's take a look at the problem. We have 117. We're going to increase it by 28%. So the first thing we want to know is what is 28%? of 117. So just like that basic problem I showed you in the beginning, like 6% of, I think it was 38, whatever I said. So we want to fi uh, figure out what 28% of 117 is. So how do we do that? Well, 
when you want to find a percent of a number, what you need to do is convert or change that percent into a decimal. Okay, so how do we do that? There's two ways you can convert or write a percent as a decimal. Effectively, the, the main idea is you're dividing by 100. Okay, so the result of taking 28 and dividing by 100 is going to be 0.28. All right, but most of you out there probably remember this. They're like, don't you move the decimal point over? Yes, that's the same thing as divided by 100. So 28% is the same thing as 28.0%. And if I move the decimal point over two places to the left, okay, I get 0.28. So 28% is equivalent to the decimal uh, 0.28. So just remember, when you're going to percent to a decimal, just move the decimal point over two places to the left. Again, it's the same thing as dividing by 100. Right? Uh, whatever way you remember it is, um, you know, the uh, the best way for you. Okay, so there's two um, approaches here. Okay, so uh, again, the first thing we want to do is figure out what 28% of 117 is. So I'm going to take that 28%. That's going to be 0.28. I'm going to multiply by 117. So 28% of 117 is 32.76. Okay, so if 117 is increased by 28%, which is effectively, again, 32.76, well, what's the answer? Well, we got 117, and we're increasing it by 32.76, which, of course, is 28% of this original number. We add those two numbers together, and we get 149.76. Okay, so this is one approach. Um, Perfectly fine to answer a percent of increase. And by the way, um, uh, this particular topic that I'm talking about, obviously it's percent, but it's kind of a subtopic of percent of percent of increase. And uh, we have another thing called percent of decrease. But let's take a look at another way we could approach this problem. Okay, so here uh, we got 117 increased by 28%. So what are we going to do? Uh, what do we want to find out? So let's say this is 117. So what we're trying to uh, figure out is uh, how much is this 117? It's been increased by 28%. Okay, we're increasing 117 by 28%, which would be like this much of 117. So if I want to know that final number, I want to know this 117 plus this 28%. But this part, this 117, is 100% of 117, okay? So the actual uh, number that I'm looking for is 100% of this 117 plus another 28%. So I want 100% of the 117 plus an additional 28%. That is a percent of increase. This sometimes confuses uh, students. So just so you know, though, 117 increased by 28% is the same thing as finding 128% of 117. So 120, uh, 128% as a decimal, let's go and write this out here, 128.0%. So if I want to write this as a decimal, I move that over, that uh, decimal point two places to the left, so that's 1.28. Of course, I could divide 128 by 100, you'd still get the decimal 1.28. So um, if you understand this, 128%, we want 128% of 117. So take that 117, multiply by the decimal equivalent of 128%. That would be 1.28. And you can see we get the same answer. So some of you uh, took this route. Uh, others of you took this route. They're both perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to suggest that you want to know both ways, you know, conceptually understand a percent of increase and a percent of decrease. But this is important stuff, okay? Again, percent proms come in all sorts of flavors. You know, percent is fun, okay? The, just think, the more you know about percent, the more, you know, you can answer questions about your own personal, um, you know, needs, okay? And typically, again, percent is closely linked uh, to um, money. You simply can't watch the news, look at your phone, read anything with, uh, without seeing this symbol. Okay, go to the store, there's like sales going on. You know, they're talking about inflation, there's uh, credit card interest rates, there's mortgages, car loans. Again, anything to do with money, you need to understand this really, really well. Okay, so hopefully this little video helped you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. 
Again, if you are struggling with percent or basic math, I'm going to recommend my Math Foundations course. Of course, you can find all of this at my Math Help program and or like my pre-algebra, Algebra 1, I teach a percent in there as well. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.